Hello and welcome to Afterlife Topics. If you like this type of content, please consider subscribing to the channel or becoming a patron at patreon.com forward slash afterlife topics. Everybody, welcome to Afterlife Topics and Metaphysics. This is Cyrus. Hope you're having a fantastic day wherever in the world you happen to be. And on this video, I'm going to talk about the idea of there is some kind of an extraterrestrial plot that is keeping humanity held back. This comes in the heels of a video I put out a uh, couple, couple of weeks ago concerning what we call the astral blockade, which is this a concept that I began to realize during my dowsing communications that there was an intentional block about what extent information can come through uh, any channel of any world, any dimension, any species, anything that goes beyond the terrestrial world that we're on right now. And it's kind of loosely related to what we call the uh, prime directive to use Star Trek terminology, which is that uh, other species do not want to interfere with our free will by coming in and saying, hey, look at us, we're we're, you know, a more powerful advanced civilization. Here's all this technology that you can use to destroy yourselves, right? And that actually makes a lot of sense to me, even though on a certain moral level, I don't agree with that concept of uh, preventing information from coming in easily. And I also do believe that there's ways around that. But as always, you know, in the heels of this uh, watered down UFO report that just came out of Congress, or I should say the Pentagon. And uh, maybe I'll make a separate video about this. And it, it wasn't quite a nothing burger, but it wasn't necessarily breaking new ground. Uh, it was interesting to see uh, concessions by the US government that we don't know what these things are. I'm sure they do know what they are, but it is opening a lot of eyes. Nonetheless, I always want to go deeper in these subjects than uh, merely staying on the surface and uh, try to find a greater perspective of what's really going on. Uh, again, on a deeper perspective. That's kind of what I do on this channel and in my books and everywhere else is we're, we're, we're doing deep dives. It doesn't always mean we come up with uh, useful or accurate information, but it's about the investigation. That's what I like to do. So uh, one of the patrons, forwarded me to a channel called Cosmic Agency. We're going to play a clip of that channel in a moment. And uh, one of the things I found interesting about this channel and the host, Goisha, is that she claims to be in a communication with a higher density world, which we would, you know, for me, I interpret often this as being things on the astral spectrum. But uh, for her, it's in relation to an extraterrestrial group uh, which belong to a race that in, in ET lore, they're known as Nordics. They were the ones, the famous Travis Walton case, who took him out of a forest out in central Arizona. Uh, they're often like very tall, very beautiful looking humanoid uh, figures, but uh, deeper into the ET lore, we call them Tigetans. That's apparently what they refer to themselves as. But uh, the, on this channel, this woman claims that she is in contact with there's a, a couple of people from that species, uh, not through uh, wishy-washy channeling so much as actual concrete contact, such as through media, through uh, actual voice chatting, and uh, and d d dialogue on on a computer. So the claim isn't that it's just subconscious imprints of of messages, so much as uh, something that's more tangible. And there may be some kind of a channeling involved as well. I'm not completely sure. But the point is, is that uh, this communication or this, this uh, YouTube channel got me very curious because there's a lot of very interesting information on it. And, uh, I, you know, the host seems believable in terms of her authenticity and what you know she believes in what she's saying. But it, it was also a bit unnerving because it took this concept of the astral blockade, the uh, information blockade, a step further, and in essence, describes what we could describe as a plot by this thing, this, this bureaucratic extraterrestrial institution that is being called the Galactic Federation. Now, obviously, it's very silly because whatever name this institution would have, it wouldn't be in English 
right? So it wouldn't actually be called a galactic federation. Maybe we're just using references again from, I don't know, maybe Star Trek to help us figure out these concepts. But um, whatever it is, is that it's a group of many, many advanced, what we would call higher density entities, which again, fits right in with the astral spectrum. The astral spectrum is often described as the fifth density. And this is the same place that ETs typically come out of. So they are literally a world apart from us, a, a dimension apart from us. So anyway, the point is, is that this channel is uh, the communicators to Goisha are describing that uh, this federation takes this, the concept of a blockade a step further and maybe intentionally keeping humanity held back and dumb because uh, as, as if suffering is a commodity. It's as if uh, uh, they, they want the experience, they, they want the act, be able to access this planet and its incarnations to have difficult experiences that they can grow from in a limited time span of, of, of a human being. And uh, to them, that's, that's a powerful, valuable commodity that you have a planet that is intentionally ignorant the, the people are, you know, the civilization is intentionally less advanced and they want to keep it that way. So that there's basically interests that don't care if people are suffering or ignorant or being controlled by uh, nefarious beings, because they want to keep a system in place where they can incarnate into human bodies and obtain some kind of a, some kind of a lesson or, some, some kind of, uh, I guess, the, the cosmic version of experience points in a big multidimensional RPG game. So they want to keep the system in place as it is. And that that is the struggle. Now, I, I listen to this and it's very concerning because the concept would be that it's not just like communications from, from outside of this world or what we call the afterlife, which is this higher density. It's not just that those are being moderated so much as that there's a plot to keep us dumb, to prevent us. The, 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 one of the most unnerving things I heard on this podcast was uh, to actually prevent us from ever becoming an intergalactic or interstellar civilization, that uh, we are not considered an actual species. We are considered like an experiment that is used so people can incarnate here and get certain experiences and take that with them as they proceed into realms beyond this one. And that's the only purpose of this planet, of this existence. So we're not taken seriously as a, as a real civilization. We're not taken seriously as um, people who are suffering because in some ways in these other existences that, that most of us have on this planet, we've consented to this situation and so as we plead to make contact with ets you know uh, as we plead for like this ufo report to have you know some kind of disclosure that all of this is going to go unheard because you have this galactic federation moderating all of us and keeping us held down and by what is in their mind there they are being ethical and fair but to us it's it, it, it's really cruel and so, in essence, on this channel, Cosmic Agency, we have this Goisha woman, and she's speaking to uh, alleged extraterrestrial communicators, such as one named Swaru. And they're saying that this Tagetan species has walked away from the Galactic Federation because they think that it's not it's a transgressive or unethical approach to a to a budding civilization because a lot of us on this planet are being controlled and manipulated by nefarious powers and we can see this among the corporate elite you know whatever whatever you want to see it as and uh it's not something that we consent to it's not a democratic system actually it's a uh kabbalistic system controlled by nefarious powers on top so let's go ahead and play a clip from the cosmic agency channel i have reached out to this woman to come on and discuss things on this show i have not heard back it's a big channel so probably they have <laughs> they're too popular for us at afterlife topics or something i don't know but uh in the meantime i'm gonna go ahead and play a clip and then you can listen to exactly what they have to say and uh then I'll, I'll switch to the next part of the videos. So I'm going to go on these uh, dowsing rods and communi communicate with this, this same entity, the same woman that I've been in communication with who claims to be of, of sixth density 
claims to be in contact with different extraterrestrial species, and we're going to see what she has to say. Now, my my Daoist communication has been providing detailed, full sentence communications lately, uh, completely outside of my subconscious. And I pick these things up, and I have no idea what it's going to say, what's going to come through, which to me is pretty amazing. And so I think that would be an an excellent objective perspective to see if there's actually any truth behind this. And if we should be concerned, if this is something that we should be thinking about, or maybe this is some kind of disinformation. So let's play the clip from Cosmic Agency, one of the most recent videos discussing this issue. Ethics is something that changes depending on on the level you are looking from, depending where you stand, depending on the on the spectrum of the reality from which you operate. So from our perspective, from the human perspective, what the Federation is doing disregarding our free will is unethical. It is. And as I explain, as I will explain a bit later, the Yaski and Tigetans do view what the Federation is doing as unethical, but only from human incarnated perspective. So this is super important because you cannot just take what we say and run with it without understanding the full context of what we are saying. Yes, we call them regressive. Yes, we call them unethical, but only through the isolated perspective of the incarnated humans as they understand reality and as they understand suffering. But it is not unethical from their perspective up there. From up there, they are doing the right thing. So this is very important. Now, Yaski has a problem with this situation and with this valuing the free will of 5D people above the free will of the 3D people. And the problem for her is because it basically invalidates the inhabitants of the 3D experiences as if they were playable characters. It devaluates their experience because how many times has she explained this experience is real? It may be simulated by the immersion or whatever. It's simulated by the mind itself, but it is something that you perceive to be real and that's what makes it real. So she's very much against devaluating this experience from within 3D. And as Varua X explained, for them, for the Federation members, us, Yaski, Taigetans, Varu, complaining about all this, it's like complaining that the character inside the game is suffering. And it's like we are trying to convince the char- character within the game to do something. For them, it's ludicrous, it's, 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 it's absurd. Um, for them, this is a game. This is a play field. As we said many times, the extraterrestrial races perceive this place as, as, a, as, the, as the only place in the universe where multiple ET races can come in and, and have this seeming human experience using this human biosuit. And they are using Larian morphology because, according to them, it is best suited for the Earth experience. So it is a game in in that sense, because it is the place where they can come in using various methods, immersions, you know, half immersions, temporary immersions, half step downs, whatever, many ways of coming in here and experiencing this as and and experiencing this within the human suit. And also it, it is a game because because everything here is artificially guided and manipulated and it doesn't reflect at all what's outside it doesn't and this is going to be talked about in the video number four how our reality is so so manipulated and guided and artificial everything even and especially and that's going to be explained as well very important point especially the concepts 
and ideas and stories and narratives running through the UFO community. Where else do you think they would be especially focused on manipulating the perception of people, especially in this community, because this is where the awakened people are asking questions. So this is especially important for them to manipulate those communities. But that's going to be in video number four and a little bit and three and five. I don't remember, but it's going to be the next part. So so why is it a game for them? Because, like I said, because they come in here using different methods, incarnation methods, and also because this place doesn't reflect the reality at all of what's happening outside. Everything is artificial. All the ideas, concepts, the way of living, it's, it's just artificially guided. So the sad thing here, as Yaski says, is that they do not see it as a problem because for them, that's what's wanted. This is a wanted and desired experience for many, many of them in 5D and many souls coming from beyond 5D. This is a very unique, a special experience here to have. One second. So as we can see, there are some very interesting points that she makes. And I think the big one is that it's not necessarily evil behavior on the part of these higher dimensional authorities so much as perceptions of ethics change as you move up in so-called density levels, much like our perception of ethics and how we feel about a cricket or an ant is different than how, how a cricket feels about another cricket. Me personally, I try not to kill insects and I rescue them if possible. I used to keep crickets as, 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 as pets, but still there is a, uh, uh, there was a difference in perspective, which on their end, may seem perfectly fine and is in league with with maintaining the free will of other beings but for us seems very unfair nonetheless again what we're all about on this channel is critical thinking is this even an accurate uh communication is there something else going on behind the scenes can i use other tools at my disposal to glean more information about what's going on and get a better perspective so that uh, we can approach a subject like this in the most productive way possible. So la late last night, I picked up the dowsing rods. And again, these things have been on fire lately, depending on what time I put this video up, I'll actually be doing a live stream with the rods for uh, viewers of the channel and want to ask questions or engage with the communicator. But again, these rods have proven themselves again and again to provide messages to me in other languages. When I want a recipe, she sends me recipes, sometimes in Hindi. No, they tend to be Indian recipes, although she's not Indian. She just thinks Indian food is great. And uh, on a personal level, uh, very, very helpful to me on numerous situations. Now, I do have to keep my, my guard up because... Uh, as many people have pointed out, like, how do we know always that the communicator is who she says she is? Personally, I, I at this point, feel like it's a legitimate and honest communication. So if things were to ever go into the negative spectrum, I would actually very quickly shut the communication down. But at this point, it is my guide who is claims to be a six-density woman who once lived on Earth. And from her perspective... She uh, engages with and knows many extraterrestrials as we would consider them. And therefore, I decided to send the channel to her. I asked her to review these videos on Cosmic Agency. And so I gave her a few hours to do that, came back. And uh, again, late last night, I was a little bit tired. Uh, I think uh, you can see in the video, but I, I, I began scribing transcribing with the rods and got a very interesting communication as a result so i'm going to go ahead and play part of that transcription process and show you what came up Lorena, are you present? Did you have a chance to watch the Cosmic Agency YouTube channel?
Do you think in a couple sentences you can describe what you thought, if it was accurate, if it wasn't accurate, if it was, uh, if things are the way that she described with, an, with a galactic federation that is intentionally keeping humanity held back, keeping humanity from waking up or being able to evolve into a higher density? Okay. We'll begin. A to H. I to P. Q to Z. Q. R. S. T. Okay, T. H. E. The. A to H, I to P, I, 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 J, K, L, L, M, N, N. Okay. Vowel. O. A to H. I to B. Q to Z. Q. R the nor <clears throat> I wonder if she's spelling like Nordic, like Nordic alien, that's wild. <laughs> Lorena, are you spelling Nordic? Okay. Nordics plural <clears throat> A to H A This is interesting A R A R E A to H A to H Try again A B C C A I was at A to H This is vowel a E A A I can't really figure this one out. <laughs> is it is it A A Okay, so I guess that's a no. A E I O Nordics are C O hmm. A to H I to P I to P I I N C O N T R. Okay, control. No, no, 
works out. Controlling L L I N G. Jeez, the Nordics are controlling what? This is this is this is crazy. Okay. A to A. So just to recap what I picked up and what the communication with Lorena uh, resulted in, she said, the Nordics are controlling no real shared message about knowledge. The Tigetans are selective about what they actually oblige. And that uh, this communication on cosmic agency was, in Lorena's words, another volatile communication. Now, of course, I kept this dialogue going for a while beyond what I recorded to get more details about what she thought. And in essence, my communicator, Lorena, who claiming to be a sixth density being, uh, explained that she thought that 90, 95% of what Goisha was saying was accurate, of what this communicator to Goisha was saying was accurate. That one, she thought it really was a Tigetan or Nordic that she was talking to, that there really is a galactic federation and that there really was a split or a division between uh, the Tigetans and this galactic federation that they uh, really are uh, on kind of, you know, have, having, having some, some difficulty. That said, there was some very obvious signs of possible misinformation coming through. In her mind, it was because the communication maybe was being broken down that there was uh, something uh, being mistranslated, but she doesn't rule out the possibility of some type of intentional miscommunication or I should say deception as well. Lorena's opinion about this was very clear, very adamant that the Galactic Federation, which is a real institution of many, many or hundreds of different ET species, while they have to stay within parameters about interrupting your free will, they are not actively involved in subjugating humanity or trying to keep us held down or trying to prevent us from becoming an interstellar species. That it's actually uh, darker forces on this planet that are doing this, that, that the Galactic Federation is in opposition to. And that they, uh, again, are not interested in, in any way slowing down humanity's progress, but uh, quite the opposite, that the, that the forces in the higher realms, they have to abide by what we, we call before the astral blockade, rules of free will, the prime directive, what have you. But behind the scenes, what they're trying to do is the opposite, which is wake humanity up, which is in opposition to negative races, negative entities, and negative beings in positions of power on this planet, who are actually the ones who want to keep humanity pushed down and not evolving. And basically, this idea that they think of us as NPCs, or they think of the planet as a playground, and they want to just keep, keep things as they are so that they can incarnate and learn certain lessons. Uh, Lorena, who's just one contact and you know one person with one opinion, she's not an exalted person who has all the answers, but in her opinion, uh, this was nonsense, that um, these forces and higher densities, it's just they, they don't consider that a third density person is somehow their opinion doesn't matter. Because it really what it comes down to is the, the intense suffering and pain on this planet. And if you want to remind yourself what that's like, there's an excellent podcast right now by Jordan Peterson. Go watch the interview with you on me park, a North Korean um, refugee or survivor to hear about just the, the unbelievable suffering that can and does happen on this planet, which is completely preventable. Uh, that kind of suffering and darkness spreads out across all densities. And this is something I've known about through all my years of studying the afterlife as well as astral travel. Incredible pain and suffering on this planet uh, spreads outward and causes lower realms to manifest. It causes a lot of pain and darkness in places beyond this one. And this has a metastatic effect on all civilizations and it pushes everyone down when there is such a such, such, such a center of evil behavior and this is something that 
higher forces are actively working against since why humans have to rapidly begin changing our frequency, changing our attitudes so that we can harmonize more with these astral civilizations, with these extraterrestrial civilizations. And it doesn't have to be like, you know, them landing on the White House lawn and then we, or we give up control to them and join some kind of galactic government. No, what it basically just comes down to is just people on an individual basis, waking up, being aware of the system, how it works, uh, higher dimensions, up to stuff we talk about in this channel, and uh, re rejecting systems of control by darker forces on this planet, treating each other better, becoming less materialistic, less consumeristic, and uh, just becoming more mature, I suppose, to a point where it begins canceling out uh, a lot of these issues. And then we do have an opportunity to move forward and advance as a species. And we are a species that we're not a lesser species are considered like a game or a playground like what's being described by this communicator so what i am uncertain of is why this communicator was painting a picture like this it could be some weird agenda some kind of manipulation whatever the case may be it's likely that goisha really is in communication with some kind of taigetan extraterrestrial species and i get that but we don't know what their motive is. Likewise, can I completely say what Lorena's motives are? I, I don't know either. There's definitely com, com, mo different motives from different entities that are in combat with each other. But use your, um, use your common sense, use your logic to try to deduce what's going on. That's the best advice that I can give you. So that is Lorena's perspective about this matter and the Cosmic Agency channel, uh, which is... Uh, Again, one, one person's opinion, from, but, but from a higher vantage point, which may have some fruit to it. That's it. If you want to get involved, head on over and join the Facebook group or become a patron, patreon.com forward slash afterlife topics, where we can do one on one sessions together. You can join our bi weekly meetings, all of that at the $30 level. Unlimited one on one sessions with me if you need help in these areas. Uh, helps keep this operation going. I always appreciate the help and a special shout out and thank you to you guys who are patrons supporting this work. With that being said, this is Cyrus Kirkpatrick, and I hope you enjoyed this video. And I'll see you guys on the next one.